Hey everybody, this is Bruce. In this video I wanted to talk a little bit a little bit about this new software I'm using Blender. Well it's not a new software, but it's new to me. I've been using it I guess since around Christmas time, so maybe two just over two months. And uh, I wanted to tell you about uh, what I thought about it. It's well I guess I should tell you what it is. It's a 3D artistic software. I don't know what else to say. You can go to Wikipedia and probably find out a lot more about it, like what it really is and then you know all the things it does but basically I think it's just a 3D artistic software I'll just leave it like that I guess maybe I should give you a bit of perspective about myself so you know where I'm coming from when I talk about the software is I'm well I'm a new user I've only been using it for like I said two months and I've never used any 3D artistic software before so in that sense I'm totally new but I have used 3D engineering software before. I was working at a job where I was modeling for nearly three years straight using using Pro Engineer Wildfire 3. So that's what I'm used to. I'm used to that engineering and very precise software. That's my background. The point is, is I'm not familiar with this artistic stuff until recently. I've really never done a render before. I think Pro Engineer did have like a, a little render engine, but anytime I used it, everything turned out terrible. So I don't think it's really made too much for rendering. So I'm really not like used to rendering or doing artistic stuff or anything like that. This is all pretty new to me. So what I thought I would do is go ahead and kind of just list the things I didn't, I don't like and didn't like about it and then the things I do like about it. Coming from somebody with such a small amount of experience, if nothing else, I thought it would be fun for me to look back on this in a few years or a year to see what I think now compared to what I thought then, which is now. Okay, anyway. So I'll go ahead and get started with the list. So the first thing, and I think anybody who knows anything about this software will agree, it's pretty hard to learn. Actually, what I'm most familiar with and otherwise in a 3D software is Pro Engineer, which is a little bit known for being hard to use. At least it was in the older days. And I would say this is right up there with it. It may even be harder. It seems to me that there's some things that there's not even a menu uh, way to do them. You have to use the keyboard, which I like, but it, it does take a little bit longer to remember. Another example is with the mouse. Would, by default, to click on something, to pick something, use the right mouse button. And I've never used a software where the default to select, and I've used other CAD softwares too, not regularly, but I've used them you know, a couple of times here and there. And, and when I was in college, I was using a lot of different ones. Never had a software where you right click to select an object in the viewport or in your work area. It's always left click. So. I mean, all throughout computer usage, I mean, left click is how you select something. Right click is usually extra menus and extra options. But by default, right click is selecting your model. Right click is selecting your, you know, things in your view area. Left click is, uh, I don't know what it is, but anyway. So first thing I did is off somebody's tip online is I, I switched it. So it's easy to switch, super easy. But that's just kind of, kind of the way this software is. It's a little bit strange in the way you use it, the interface, and just the way it works. Okay, so that's not so great. The next thing I would say isn't so good about it, and I don't really like, but I mean, it's not really the software's fault. Well, let me just explain, is it's not an engineering software. So as far as I can see, there's no drawing. So if you wanted to make a print or, you know, a manufacturing drawing or an engineering drawing, I don't see any way to do that. I don't see anything the way you can easily do precise measurements and there's no, as far as I can see, there's no kind of parametric functionalities that you can't set parameters for dimensions. You can't drive anything by dimensions. So it's, it's not made for that. So it's not really bad, I guess, but I wish it had it. It would be so cool if I could just make a plane, do a sketch on the plane, extrude it, all those dimensions on that sketch were, you know, rigid and I could uh, double click on the dimensions and change them and lock them and put constraints on them and that would make this so much better I think and maybe that's too much maybe adding all that is a lot and then the program will be bulky and that's not really what they want anyway but coming from a, a pro engineer user perspective I really miss that part of it I feel so strange just sketching things uh, you know freehand that's not what I'm used to Okay, so then that's kind of something that uh, I didn't like so much. And there's not very, very many bad things. I forgot to say that at the beginning. It was actually hard to come up with, like, negatives. The next thing is what I found, and I don't know it personally, but from what I've heard is this software doesn't have as much industry support as some of the other ones, some of the, like the 3D Max or something like that. 
for me, it doesn't really matter just as a hobbyist, and maybe it's even better in some sense. I won't get into it, but anyway, that's one thing is it seems like if you learn this software, it's not probably going to be used as much in the industry, whereas if you learn one of the commercial softwares, it will be. Or I don't know if you don't call this one commercial, but what I mean is one of the uh, proprietary softwares like 3D Max or any of these other ones. Uh, you may be have an easier time to get work in the industry, whereas this seems to be uh, less like, you know, likely. Again, almost all of these things aren't really pure bad. They're just some people would consider them a little bit negative. This last one, really, I don't care about because I'm not trying to get into the industry. Although I would admit it would be cool if I could, but, well, that's a whole other story. Anyway, so let's move on to the good stuff I like about it. Well, number one at the top, it's free. So right off the bat, if you don't like anything, well, you don't have to use it. You don't have to pay. You never paid for it to begin with, assuming you didn't do a donation the first time you downloaded it. So there's nothing to lose. I, I like that. I like even on software where you do have to pay for it, proprietary software, I don't I like it when they give you something for free to try. I don't like to pay for something and then learn that I don't like it later. So I love that it's not only free at the beginning, but it's free forever if you want it to be. Of course, they take donations, and that's a great idea because it's, you know, a lot of people spend obviously a lot, a lot of time on it, so they deserve uh, to be paid for it. So it's great if you, you do pay for it, but you don't have to. There's no obligation. There's no expectation. So that's awesome. Free is great. And it's open source. So I love open source. Open source is awesome, and this is why it's so powerful, and it has so many add-ons, and blah, 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 blah. The next thing is it's extremely powerful. I mean, this software can do so much. If you could just go and type in, I don't know what you have to type in, like Blender art demos, I don't know. You can search it anyway. If you look it out there, you'll see like people have made just absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing stuff with this software. So I think there's basically no limit is what you can do. It's not only for making pictures, by the way, and models. You can make uh, animations. They make like this yearly movie. I don't remember what it's called, but like, this like short film, I don't know, they're like 20 minutes or something every year, and they're like what you would see at the movies. I mean, it's really high quality stuff. So, this software I think will go as far as you want it, as you need it to go. Like, you as long as you can continue learning, you can do basically anything you want. It's not like some of this, you know, free open source software isn't so well developed and it's like lagging behind its, its competitors, but I don't think that's the case in this one. This one is really. Uh, has everything. All right, the next thing is, at least for me on my system, which is uh, Linux Mint, uh, whatever, version 18, it's extremely fast to start. For one thing, this thing boots up in like two seconds or one second. It's almost instant, and it's extremely stable. I can't believe I've been running this since end of December, and I've had one crash the whole time. And that wasn't even on my main PC. That was on another PC, which was running Linux Mint off a USB stick. And I was using an app, an add-on, when it crashed. Other than that, it's not crashed once. And I've put a lot of hours into it since then. Never crashed. I cannot believe it. It's probably the most stable software I have. Like, uh, you know, big software that I have. It's uh, amazing to me. I've never had a crash or a glitch. It just works. And it starts up fast. It's super light. I can't believe the download size was like 140 megabytes or something. Megabytes. So I don't know how they have all this functionality packed into this instability, packed into this free software. To me, this is like almost mind blown. This is, I think this software should win an award just on those basis alone. So that's wonderful. Okay, brings me to the next thing. It has a huge community. And I can't compare it to other... 3D drawing softwares, softwares, yeah, I think that's a word, anyway, it has a huge community, there's a Blender artist forms, there's a Blender Facebook group, there's a lot of YouTube videos where you can learn how to do all kinds of stuff, and just a lot, because it's free and open source, lots of people use it, and because lots of people use it, you can get help for everything, I mean, you don't know how to do something, you just do a search in DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine, and you'll find what you need pretty quickly usually. So, yeah, that's a really huge benefit. If you have a software where there's not many users and you can't really get help, that's a bummer. Or if they're behind some kind of paid, you know, service for support, like 
And uh, so that's all actually about it for my list. Basically, it's a I think a great software. I'm uh, super impressed. Uh, there are a couple of negatives, but even the negatives aren't really negatives. They're just you know maybe not exactly what me individually likes, but overall other people couldn't maybe don't consider those things negatives. So it's just uh, it's really fun. Like I've been doing it for two months. I don't know if I'll keep doing it for for, how, for or for how long I'll keep using the software. I don't know where I'm going with it. I would like to have like some use for the software other than just kind of basically spending time on it. I wish I had like some purpose for using it. I'm just having fun right now. But at the moment, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun to model with. I'm sure I'll think of something to use it for. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say. If you guys have any experience with Blender or any other 3D modeling softwares or whatever, you can put a comment down below. I appreciate that. Or you have any questions for me? I mean, I don't know if I can help you much being a new user myself, but if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. So uh, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.